Hello, Lisa. Hey, Adam. Um, last time we were talking, you were showing me the work that you had done on Neil Armstrong's suit. But now I'm in your workspace. I see you've got his house here, too. <laughs> yes, this is a Columbia Apollo 11 uh, command module. The only piece that came back from space during Apollo 11. And this was the center house transport vehicle for all three astronauts. And then when Mike Collins orbited space while Neil and Buzz were on the moon. Just the idea of three human beings inside this thing is a little upsetting. It was really close and comfortable. I can't even imagine. Right. So what is this doing on your workbench? What are you guys doing with this thing? So this is also scheduled to go downtown uh, to the new gallery, Destination Moon. Mm -hmm. For the first time, it's going to be ever. It's going to be in the same gallery with Neil Armstrong spacesuit. That's right amazing. next to each other. Yep. I can't so we're really the super first time. super excited about that. But um, last time you were here, this was traveling around the country. Yep. It's come back. We uh, we were retrofitting it for its new display stand, so it's gonna be banked at an angle again. Oh nice. So this transport stand that you see, which is Which is the loveliest transport stand I have ever seen. It, it's pretty it's pretty uh, intricate. So this is an original Apollo oh, transport really? stand. Uh, refurbished. It was NASA had given it to us to transport our spacecraft around on. It bolts through the command module. Oh, it does. Using the same bolts holes that you would have attached it to the Saturn V rocket. So when it was on top of the rocket <laughs> stack, you would have used the same connectors and then it put on here. The only thing different is we added forklift pockets and these amazing um, two spec NASA casters. <laughs> So we can wheel it around when we're working on it. We could get it in and out of all the different venues where we traveled it to um, on our road show. Wow. And this is, this is literally how it came back from the moon with all the burning here from reentry. So NASA did a decontamination when it first arrived because it was the first, first yes. to first, they wanted to make sure they got all the germs off. Um, took off the extra Kapton and coverings that were on it. So when you see them, uh, in, on Splashdown, in those historic pictures, they'll have gold covering, Kapton, and yes. things on it. Uh, the tapes. So the tapes were removed. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see faint lines that we found during the cleaning of where all the tapes were applied oh, wow. to the surfaces. Yes. Um, all of the sort of markings or the old adhesive residues that were never cleaned off. Wow. So I've mapped them all. And you can especially see it here, which is quite cool, uh, at this angle where yeah. all the tapes were applied. So they did strip that off, but yeah. all of the other battle scars, markings, uh, burn marks from re-entry, they're all original. All of these little pockets, I think we talked about this last time. Mm -hmm. So these are pre-flight repairs where they were testing the oh, heat shield. Pieces. And if they saw, they did radiology on the heat shield after it was applied. And if they found like a air hole or an anomaly in the material, they actually drilled it out and replugged it. You so those what? are all pre-flight. When I'm doing my various replications, and I've talked to you about this off camera, that I, I always end up with a feeling of a real connection to the original builders, just because I'm traveling in similar paths. Do you end up with the same thing? After mapping this out, you feel like connected to the original makers? Yeah, and it's, it's, it's really nice because, you know, I've said this to you before, these are our primary artifacts and evidence of what happened during those flights. This yeah. is our history record and book. Yeah. They, NASA can record everything they want. They did all the technical manuals of what was supposed to happen with each artifact, each suit, each ca capsule. But, you know, really the story is here. So yeah. if we take that story away, we're not going to have the evidence of flight or the evidence of change or evolution from their original intent when it went to space. And I love bringing out those stories sure. because it does make you feel very close to um, the materials and the artifacts and knowing how things were made and each command module evolved after that. So They're there's changes. Yeah, like this heat shield is very bulked out because it was the first one. Huh. And they didn't know how it would do during re-entry. So they've added all this ablative material is much thicker than in any of the other um, command modules we have. And it was made to burn. It was made to burn right. so it kept heat out of and the And it center. just like can't came off. That's why you see all this residue yep. um, down here. Yeah. This is all ablative material now sort of creeping out of this matrix. Um, you see evidence on the heat shield up here from reentry. So this was the real point of reentry where you see completely all these burn marks right. coming up the craft. So that's it, the leading edge. Yeah. And it came in like an angle when it hit the ocean. Um, this is the umbilical that separated it from the service module upon reentry. It was guillotined off manually. Oh, really? Um, oh my God, that's all wiring. 
Yeah, isn't that cool? Wow. Covered in copper corrosion, but they're a little micro. You can see all these little yeah, dots and I do. wire sheathing. and. So do you need to do any more restoration to this or are you just um, prepping it for display? I'm just cleaning it up a bit more. Okay. Um, I have some work to do inside because I left it when I went on the show. You get to do some work inside? <laughs> yeah, some work inside, oh. um, which we can peer into. It's very, it's very tight in there, but the... Um, the paint on the interior walls was a very inorganic fire retardant paint. After the Apollo 1 fire, they changed a lot sure. of the materials. Sure. And it has no binder in it. So it's it's basically like if you were to take glass balloons and rods and uh, suspend them in the least amount of binder you can and color it, that's the paint. So right now it's... It's, it's like a pigment just sitting Yeah, there. it's coming off of the walls a little bit, but we don't want to do a treatment if we don't have to. Right. So uh, we're going to look into that a little bit more because we have some time. That's fascinating. And then... You know, we're always documenting. So every time I look at this, like you say, I learn something more. Yeah. Keep on documenting because once it goes downtown into its display case, uh, won't we won't have access. as much access to it ever again. Right. So the uh, middle seat belonged to Michael Collins. Yep. Um, the left was Neil's and the right was Buzz. <sighs> um, those seats collapse forward. So in the back, you can actually stand up in the, the spacecraft. Oh, wow. And that's where Michael Collins used his um, telescope and octant that you see the windows for on the side over there. Um, okay. Stood up in the back and then could, could navigate the ship in, in orbit. There's just nothing quite equates to seeing how small the space is to really let it sink in how remarkable the achievement is. A lot of stuff in here compared to those newer spacecraft. Yes. Going, like I look at them and I'm like, wow, they're really clean and empty. Yes, exactly. um, but yeah, it was really amazing. And then you can see all the infrastructure. So we don't have the hatch on it clearly. Yep. Um, but you see all the, the infrastructure with the hinge and the yep, arm yep. and the mechanism where that would have been so they could open the hatch outward, which was the change um, right. in the Black One schedule. So. And you're not putting the hatch on this for display. No, we'll have that displayed that separate. separately. Because uh, so many people like to see. you think my hatch would fit on here? <laughs> yes, it would. We should try it. Totally Especially with it. the Plexi. Exactly. You know, I, I, I was thinking, I, I can't imagine a more exciting project than Neil Armstrong's suit. And now you show me this. <laughs> <laughs> this is it is pretty amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's really an interesting, interesting project. And uh, I've really enjoyed learning about it. Because, uh, like you say, my thing with suits, and then um, I got lucky enough to do Gemini 4 and uh, Friendship 7, and then this. So those are the big three Amazing. Um, spacecraft, and they're all different. Lisa, it is, I, I just feel like so thrilled. Thank you for showing this to me. Sure. Amazing.